with commercial aviation eagerly awaiting the release of Boeing's NMA, or generally their next new airplane, unofficially dubbed the 797. It may surprise some that this project is not the company's first attempt at an aircraft capable of filling that all-important niche in the industry. Tune in to find out. Welcome to Globetrotting, your new home for aviation analysis. Subscribe for hundreds of upcoming videos. So yes, before the 797, Boeing was already working on a solution to the middle of the market problem, which was quite an obvious one. As you probably know, it was around the early 2000s when Boeing began developing concepts for the future airliner, a sleek, efficient, innovative aircraft that would well serve the evolved air travel market of the coming decades. We know now this project as the 787, and there were to be four variants of it introduced. Unfortunately, however, only three of those four made it onto the market today. Yes, the original lineup did include the 787-8 and the 787-9, both intended to replace the aging 767, and then we had the longer 787-10, which was intended to replace the 777-200. The fourth variant that was included, however, was a version of the aircraft that would have roughly the exact dimensions as the Dash 8, but feature a much higher seating capacity at the 290 to 330 passengers. This was to be called the 787-3. The 787-3 was designed with busy short-haul routes such as New York to Chicago, Tokyo to Osaka, or London to Berlin in mind, in contrast to its more long-range orientated big siblings. It would have a range of only 2,500 to 3,050 nautical miles. It would also feature smaller wings and blended winglets as opposed to the raked wingtips that we see which of course have quickly become a trademark of the 787 series. The overall wingspan of the 787-3 would be 25 feet or about 7.5 meters shorter than the 787-8, allowing the aircraft to fit into more domestic orientated gates, another advantage of traveling between larger cities. The variant gained particular interest in Japan as its densely clustered population centers made it the ideal location for the high capacity short haul 7873, which would be able to shuttle passengers between the large cities scattered across the island. In addition, Japanese airports also feature many of those, as mentioned earlier, smaller domestic flight orientated gates. Because of this, Japanese carriers, Japan Airlines and all Nippon Airways expressed much interest in the 7873 and actually both placed orders for the variant, with JAL purchasing 13 and All Nippon Airways purchasing 28. So, with a clear market niche to fill and airlines already lined up to order it, why did the 7873 never take to the skies? The answer is not entirely the fault of the Dash 3 variant in particular, but most of the 787 Dreamliner project as a whole. During its development, the Dreamliner was plagued with all a manner of issues. One of these issues was Boeing's amount of outsourcing to produce the plane. Almost all of the 787 parts were to originate from outside of the Boeing factories in America. Overall, the ambitious design and engineering of the aircraft made Boeing's demands on these foreign suppliers somewhat overwhelming, and many of them began to fall behind schedule. This is a regular, frequent problem we see, whether it's at Boeing or Airbus's programs today in 2022. The second was the issues with the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engine, which was available for airlines when purchasing, alongside the General Electric GENX. However, the Trent 1000 experienced failures during testing, and Rolls-Royce began to butt heads with an increasingly frustrated Boeing. As for issues with the Dash 3 variant itself, while it would serve its middle-of-the-market role perfectly, it would consequently be quite ill-suited to be anything else. This is in comparison to the Dash 8 variant. While less favourable in the middle-of-the-market scenarios, it held much more promise in the way of versatility and adaptability. All of this combined with various other issues relating to software, project management, and even disgruntled employees, of course something we would learn far more about as the years progressed, would go on to delay necessary test flights and deliveries to customers. Deliveries were postponed by years, this though is not totally out of the ordinary for a brand new plane, and after many setbacks, Boeing seemed unwilling to make any firm promises on delivery dates. This, in turn, dampened the enthusiasm that the two major Japanese carriers had in the 7873. 
it was beginning to seem more and more like a gamble with an ever-shrinking chance of success. After some re-evaluation, both Japan Airlines and All Nippon Airways decided to invest in the Dash 8 variant instead. With that, the 787-3 had lost its only two customers, at least firm customers at that point, and Boeing made the final decision to reassign its engineers to the other three variants that we know today, and that was the final nail in the coffin for the project. However, this may not be the end of the 7873 story. As mentioned at the beginning, Boeing's next plane will be tailor-made potentially to fill the exact same market niche as was intended with the 7873. While this may not necessarily mean that the 7873 project will be revived entirely, much of the work that went into its development will likely be reused in the design and production of Boeing's next new airplane. After all, with the 787 project now known as a great success and deliveries recommencing, it only makes sense for Boeing to base their next plane on its existing research and design, rather than starting on a brand new airplane from the ground up. Of course, there are benefits, but there are also negatives to doing something like this, and now it's over to Boeing to make that all-important critical decision on just what is next. The CEO of Qatar Airways even stated in an interview, the 7873 with a new lighter wing and derated engines would be an excellent platform, as sourced from airlineratings.com. Will Boeing heed to their advice? Only time will tell. What do you think? Was Boeing right to terminate the 7873 project? Or was it still to this day a mistake? Should Boeing's next new airplane be based on the existing 787 design, or should it be a clean sheet aircraft? Let us know below in the comments, and a massive thank you for tuning in to the very first video here on Globetrotting. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we are very excited as a team to bring you much more coverage on the aviation industry in the coming months.